Oh man, I really like Dev Patel, so I wish I had nicer things to say about his movie. But I gotta say that Monkey Man is surprisingly generic. Ooh, I'm getting out the red pen for this movie. So Star, I wish someone had done that. That's the problem when you make your own movie. So, you know, so much so. Dev Patel wore so many hats for this film that I think maybe he had on too many hats. And I think he lacked an outside voice to be like, Dev, I love you, baby, but your movie needs like a rewrite and some other, some other changes. So he's the star, the director, one of the producers, the co-writer, and you know, and again, it, it, it sounds exciting. You're like, yeah, Dev Patel, you're doing it. You're gonna try and make yourself a star finally. This is gonna be your big breakout. Well, he's had breakouts before, but then, you know, the momentum didn't, you know, didn't keep going. But uh, this one just didn't work out. I mean, he identified a popular genre, the lone noble fighter, but he fails to add anything to the genre, instead delivering mostly more of the same. Now, there are two areas to his credit where Monkey Man does manage to be somewhat distinct. So it takes place in India, obviously, spotlighting the lower class. Although I think some of the people from that group in India might take some issue with how Patel portrays them. Uh, for instance, there's a movie that came out back in 2021 on Netflix, The White Tiger, great movie, which has a similar story, uh, yet I feel is more unique and has a more positive, upbeat, dignified spin. Monkey Man, is like really bleak to the point where I think some people might be like, whoa, man, like there are some good things happening here and some quality people. Uh, then the other area where Monkey Man is unique is how it shines a spotlight on India's transgender community. That was a nice surprise in the film. Uh, Vipin Sharma as a transgender priestess has one of the most beautiful and moving spiritual speeches I've ever heard about the trans community. It was beautiful. It was so good. It could be a monologue for an acting class. That's how good it was. I was like, look at this gem in the middle of this mediocre movie. Patel really turns Monkey Man into a love letter with profound respect as well to India's transgender community. Uh, now as for, so that's like the two like unique things about the movie. So I'd say, now let's switch over to what doesn't work, which is unfortunately a much longer list. The biggest problem with Monkey Man is that Patel's character, and this is a big problem for this movie, is actually not that great a fighter. Like, I think after his first fight, I was like, I can't believe that's the result of this first major fight. Like, are you serious? You know, it was like in those comedy movies, where are like, I can't believe you missed. I can't believe you missed. It was crazy. Like, he gets better for the third act, but not that much better. Like, I mean, the third act is where he should have started in terms of skill level. Like, the fight scenes never reach the level of John Wick, which the movie actually references. I'd be like, psst, Dev, your movie's not good enough to reference John Wick. It's just gonna make people feel bad. Uh, although it references it early on when you're like, maybe it will be like John Wick, but it never got there. Uh, even the recent Roadhouse has better fight sequences or the extraordinary Extraction series. That's fantastic. The success of John Wick has led to a lot of copycat films, including many from the directors of John Wick, who started, of course, their own production company, 87 North, and they just flooded the marketplace with fight movies. And then there have been other ones as well, like, you know, Extraction, as I just mentioned. And so these days, you gotta be really special to stand out from the crowd. And then on top of all the John Wick copycats, before that you had the Taken craze, which is very similar. You know, uh, with a, you know, I think Taken even eventually kind of in some ways led to John Wick. So, you know, you got all the Taken copycats, you got all the John Wick copycats. And then Monkey Man, I'm afraid to say, you know, and also Monkey Man feels a little 90s too, a little bit, you know, like, like, you know, like when True Romance came out, everybody's like, what's this? This is so crazy. I love it. And, you know, that started a craze. But, you know, now you're like, a lot of people have done this already. So you can see from Dev Patel's resume uh, that he gravitates towards the thinking man's film, right? I think he, you know, and I saw when I was looking into this film, like when I wanted to figure out what I wanted to say, um... I saw a quote from him where he said, oh, I want to bring more gravitas and cultural significance to the, to the action genre. And it's like, does anybody really want that though? You know, <laughs> you know, like, 
you gotta really think if there's an audience for that, because the audience who would appreciate that doesn't want to sit through a fight movie. And the audience that wants a fight movie doesn't really want to sit through that other stuff. Maybe if you can get just the right balance. But this movie doesn't have that. In fact, it leans too far into the thinking man's action movie. It's got more thinking than action. Because Dev Patel, I think because he wants to have the thinking man's action movie, he makes the mistake of taking what should be, what should be the B storyline, his character's emotional arc, and makes it the A storyline. I mean, these problems are like so simple, but yet so big and overarching that I wish someone had said this to him and been like, you know, this just isn't going to work out, Dev. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see how it does at the box office. The reviews have been nice, but I think in large part because people are rooting for Dev Patel. He, he, a very personable, wonderful guy, but no, maybe not a great filmmaker. All right, so we'll get to that in a moment. So the focus of the film is this character's emotional state. Who wants that? As well as a lot of commentary on the current state of India, politically and socially. But from like an emotional perspective, he's not offering like any way to, any solutions. Uh, these elements uh, can make, they could make a lone noble fighter movie have some substance, right? Yet first and foremost, if you promise people a lone noble fighter movie, you gotta deliver a lone noble fighter movie, not like how he feels. Uh, too often during the movie, I also shook my head that Patel's character simply did not have what it takes to be the hero of this movie. Driven so heavily by, by emotion that it becomes a problem for the character. You're like, get your head out, get out of your head, man. Uh, I mean, that's intentional. That's what Dev Patel wants to explore. Like his emotions are too much, man. He can't even fight. And you're like, but I don't want to watch that. It doesn't make for a good movie. Patel plays a character who fights in an underground arena. And to be honest, I can't really see anybody, you know, betting on him. And that's a real problem. You know, that's a real issue for the film. Patel does have some nice directorial flourishes here and there. Once in a while, you're like, that's a gorgeous shot. But once in a while does not a movie make. Uh, and it is also, though, nice to see the film look inward, focusing on India itself instead of looking outward, right? Highlighting the wealth and history of the country. Although, again, Patel seems to imply that all wealth in India is corrupt and stolen. And, you know, if I know uh, some of you who watch this channel are in India, and I'd be very curious what your reaction is to this movie. I think, you know, obviously there are problems that need to be addressed, but I felt it was, you know, based on what I've seen in terms of appealing to audiences, you know, you gotta have, like, you know, you want the carrot and the stick. And I think people like to have pride. Like the whole point of the movie is to have like a really cool John Wick style movie that represents India, right? I mean, that, that to me seemed like a big selling point. But yet the movie is so down on India and so negative, it wipes out that element of pride and feeling good about the representation. So I'm just, I think maybe somebody should have pointed that out to Dev Patel as well. I mean, again, that would of course be up to the uh, audience in India. Um, I know there was some concern about how India would react to this film, particularly the powers that be in India. And I believe there was a rumor that's why Netflix ended up not wanting to release it. I can see why they would feel that way. But I would also say, I think audiences in India might have an issue with it as well. Uh, Patel, of course, as always, cuts a dashing figure. He looks very sharp in a suit, and his hair continues to be amazing. He's got great hair. Uh, he's smaller in stature, though, and while he clearly has a good physique, he worked out for the movie. I'm not sure he'd still, anyway, have the physical strength to take on some of his much larger opponents. It's just, the guy's just too big for you, Patel. It would take a clever fight choreographer to figure out how Patel could use his smaller size to his advantage and maybe other elements. Uh, and again, if he was playing a more skilled fighter, like he's taking on brute strength, but he's got the skills and the smarts, then the fight scenes might be a bit more believable. But you're, he's just totally outmatched in every possible way. I will say that Patel does give his character a horrific enough origin story that you definitely understand the pain that fuels him and why so many other characters are willing to help him and risk their own lives. Because what has done to him is just so horrific and egregious. But also, if I see one more exposition puppet show, I can't take it. I mean, it was great in Blue Eye Samurai. I loved it in the new, latest season of Fargo. But you can't all do it. It's played out. You know, this is why it's important to see other people's work and have an idea of what other people are doing. 
because it's just too many puppet shows at this point. It lost the originality. Like, oh, we're going to do it in a puppet show. I'm like, I know you're doing it to save money. I know it's an artistic way to save money. You can't afford to film the sequence. So you're like, oh, but it's a puppet show. And that's clever if everybody else hadn't already done it. The rest of the cast does a nice job, though. Very, very good cast. Uh, um, please forgive me for any pronunciation um, mistakes, but I very much want to highlight these actors. Ashwini Kalsakar is delicious as a queen pin who runs the corrupt nightclub where Patel's targets can be found. And it's refreshing to see a female, unapologetic by the way, female crime boss. I loved her. Um, Sobita uh, Dulapala plays a prostitute at the club and she makes a very strong impression. I really liked her a lot. She's, she beautiful, fantastic personality. She just leaps off the screen and it would have been nicer to have a larger role for her. Uh, Aditi Calconte is also very moving as Patel's mother. Charlotte Copley, I love you Charlotte Copley, always a treat. Uh, Pino Bash delivers some good comedic relief, although I felt very sorry for his character. I didn't think he deserved what happened to him. Uh, while Sikander Kerr uh, and Macron de Despondi make extremely compelling villains. And again, Patel's character made some real dumb mistakes going up against them. I'm like, does this guy, I mean, movies are very popular in India. Um, I'm like, have you never seen a movie? I mean, you're making some real, real beginner, like pre-beginner mistakes. Like it was, sometimes you were just like, dude. Uh, and as I said, uh, Sharma is particularly moving as the leader of this trans group that not only protect Patel, but it turns out are excellent fighters. That was a cool, unique sequence. Again, that was some of the most unique and original stuff in the movie. In fact, I think Patel should have relied more on his supporting cast. He made this movie as a calling card for himself, and as a result, he focuses, int focuses intently on his own character. But as the famous saying goes, so much of acting is reacting. Uh, and here he's reacting a lot to himself. And I think the movie would have benefited substantially from getting outside of Patel's character's head and allowing him to play off of this wonderful cast that he assembled. So yeah, you can totally watch Monkey Man. I mean, I don't think you need to see it in theaters, but you've seen this movie before many, many, many times and almost always a better version. I'm sorry to say that again, while I really like Dev Patel as an actor, I don't think he's particularly skilled as a writer or a director. I would liken this to when Joseph Gordon-Levitt directed Don John. Remember that? Similarly, meh. Like if you're only directing a movie to help your acting career, maybe you're not a director. Apparently Neil Blomkamp wouldn't direct this movie when Patel asked him, but Neil Blomkamp said, why don't you direct it yourself, Dev? And that turned out to be really bad advice. Uh, Christopher Nolan, by the way, told Joseph Gordon-Levitt not to star in his directorial debut. And what do you know, Christopher Nolan was right. Jordan Peele, who's an extraordinary director and helped to get this film released, very cool of him, I'm sure he's a big Dev Patel fan too, uh, he doesn't star in his own movies, and that I think benefits his work. Some actors very rarely can do double duty. It can be done, but I think for the most part, actors should be producers on their own projects, but partner up with a great director, which is the case much more often and it works out much better. And if Neil Blomkamp didn't want to direct this movie, Dev Patel should have just kept asking around. Although I got to say, again, the script is weak. So I think that that would have also hurt him. You know, he would have had to find an up and coming director who needed the gig and, um, you know, would, would, wanted, was like, the script's not great, but Dev Patel will be in the movie. He, you know, you know he, needed a, he needed an up and coming director who wanted to hitch their, hitch their star to Dev Patel. And then maybe even though the script would continue to be weak, although maybe the director would have the guts to be like, Dev, thanks for bringing me on. Can I, can I maybe rewrite your script just a little? <laughs> you know, please, I promise you it's going to benefit both of us. But I think then, you know, at least the movie would maybe be a little bit better directed and that would have maybe helped it a little bit better. All right, so that's my review of Monkey Man, now playing in theaters, but probably very soon on streaming. And I think that if you want to see it, Digital and streaming is probably the better place. All right, so share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.